Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different area of responsibility, different department, generally the department head. And today we're very pleased to have our Planning and Conservation Director with us, Mr. Aaron Brault. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. We were just talking a little bit off the air about how long has it been that Aaron now has been part of the county family. Aaron, please begin by just sharing a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I started with the county in 2007, um, and that was for a grant, specific grant funded program, uh, the non-motorized program that I think the community is, is quite aware of. Um, and then in 2010, I took over as interim director of the department and, and since 2011 have been the director. So going on 13 years and it's been a good 13 years. So. 13 years now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. We're, we're both getting a little older. Yep. Yep. I'm so. at the later stages in life where my kids have left the nest and Aaron's in the midst of coaching baseball and having yep. a lot of fun with his children. Yep. Yeah. Well, Keeps I'm... I'm pleased you're here, Aaron, because you have helped make good things happen. And, and starting back with that non-motorized program, uh, that really was a wonderful gift to Sheboygan County. What well, we are one of four communities that received 25, 26 million. Yep. Why don't you just start there and then give a little overview of some of the programs and services that are in your department? Sure. So, yep, obviously we work on special grants like the, the non-motorized program. We still have one or two projects out there yet. We're still trying to spend down that money, but um, overall uh, that project's pretty much wrapping up. A uh, couple other things. So we have sort of two sides of the department. Uh, our conservation side deals with the ag community a lot. So working with the ag sector on water quality improvement types of programs, trying to uh, essentially keep the nutrients on the field and from running off into our lakes, streams, and, and rivers and things like that. Um, on the other side of the office, we have the, the, the planning division, which deals with, uh, we maintain a lot of the county's mapping. So if you dial 911 and the officer, responding officer or ambulance gets to your house, it's because my staff did their job right in, in maintaining the address information. Um, parcel information, environmental data, things like that are all uh, housed in, in our GIS system, geographical information system. So that's maintained through our office. And, and just to um, interrupt real quick, but I hear your GIS staff and uh, Sheboygan County just got a national shout out. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Our, our GIS staff was pretty psyched about that. So they used our data. We were uh, one of the first counties in the state and or nation to migrate to this new GIS platform. And so they showcased it at their, their annual meeting. Uh, the software vendor did this past, uh, this past week. And um, it, it, it's in front of 10,000 people uh, live. And then there's about 20,000 people that attend a conference. Huge conference. Yep. And, the, and, and all the workstations where they had hands-on uh, learning sessions, they were using our data. So it was, it was a pretty cool thing. So. And I think just within our own organization, Tom, most of our staff don't have a real good feel for what GIS does or what are all the capabilities of it, but certainly your staff do, Aaron does. And yep. it's remarkable as I listen to just 20 minutes or so of that uh, of that conference, hoping to hear them mention Sheboygan County, but talking about all the capabilities. And as you said, your staff are putting in data that helps law enforcement, health and human services. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of, we're trying to branch out and get more departments to use it to do some analysis. So right now we maintain a lot of data, but we're not using it probably as best as we could into doing analytical things with it. So always room for improvement. Yep. But anyway, Absolutely. a nice compliment to you and your staff. So you mentioned the water quality side, GIS. Please continue and with some yeah, of the Yeah, so programs. we have some regulatory functions as well through uh, zoning. So we maintain shoreland zoning in the county. Um, and then also, uh, if you are in an unincorporated area, you might not be hooked up to a sewer system. So um, every three years, you get the letter from our office saying, hey, it's time to maintain your septic system. So um, we oversee the installations and the maintenance of those systems in the county. And there's about 10,000 systems in, in the county. So. About 10,000 systems. Yep. And yep. some of those landowners, want, being one of them, you're not always real enthusiastic about getting that letter, but it is a nice reminder about the importance 
of maintaining your your wastewater treatment facility for your residents yep. essentially yep yep it's all you know goes back towards groundwater and yep. and and keeping things where they need to be and and safe so so how many staff do you have and what's your total operating budget um, with myself we have 14 staff and our typical operating budget falls around 2 2.2 million um, about half of that is levy, and then the rest is um, either some state funding or federal funding or grant funding. So we actively pursue a lot of grants in the department, and that also falls to that $2.2 million budget that we typically have. So A number of years ago, we consolidated the Land and Water Conservation Department, or that side of the house, with the planning side of the house. And now, of course, it's a one-stop shop at the administration building. How's that worked out? From my standpoint, you know, I started when the merger happened, so I, I don't have a, a feel for how it was before. But um, from my standpoint, I think things are, are going quite well. Um, you know, we've been able to share resources in, in that regard. Um, you know, some administrative staff, you know, once through attrition, we didn't have to hire and, and and fill some needs where we perhaps had um, some stronger needs, I, I guess you could say. You weren't alone. So. There were a number of areas that we streamlined or consolidated just as we tried to gain efficiencies and keep that property tax levy in check. So Aaron, as the planning director, obviously you are surrounded with key staff who implement these programs and services that you just touched on. What's been your primary focus of late, or are there any new initiatives that you've been a part of? Sure, I think what's been taking up a lot of my time lately is Amsterdam Dunes. So a few years ago, the county purchased a 328-acre property in, in the town of Holland, um, and we've been trying to restore that property, uh, applying for a lot of grants through that uh, or for that property, um, and then also trying to establish a wetland mitigation bank there. Um, so. And you're working with a citizen advisory committee? Yep, we have an, uh, uh, it's called the Amsterdam Dunes Advisory Committee, which is made up of neighbors. Um, there's a couple neighborhood associations uh, that are in that area, the local conservation club, um, the supervisory, uh, uh, county board supervisors from that district, and uh, a couple other stakeholders. And, and so we meet maybe quarterly, if not maybe a little bit more often, and talk about some of the projects that are going on out there and, and get some direction from those citizens groups. So, and, of course and that's the, not the only one. We have a number of advisory groups that we deal with in our department. So. And do you want to just briefly mention the award that Sheboygan County received due to the, the collaboration and the good work involving the Amsterdam Dunes? Yeah, it was a recent award came to Sheboygan County. Um, I can't recall the name of it, but it was essentially a good government award. Yeah. Salute yep. to local government, I yep. think. Yeah, and they selected yep. what two or three um, counties across the state, and Sheboygan County happened to be one of them because of you and former Chairman Roger Strudy, Tom Wagner, and a number of others that all worked to purchase this property, and and we've since I think recouped our $4.2 million investment. Yep, so the entire investment was about 4.2, like you said, and through different funding sources, uh, whether it was a, a state stewardship grant, we also got some dollars from a settlement fund um, for the uh, Superfund site of the river that helped. Uh, those were the two big ones, and then we were able, through the purchase of that, if you recall, we were able to, uh, uh, there was three lake lots associated with the purchase of that property that aren't part of the preservation area that we are able to sell off, um, get those on the tax rolls, um, and and recoup uh, the remaining uh, dollars we had outstanding. So yeah, we're fully recouped, and now any dollars here forward that we get are, are going into the restoration and, and potentially uh, recreational aspects of the property. Trail so, enhancements, things of that nature. Yeah, those, that'll come down the road. You know, we want to yeah. focus on the restoration first, and then, you know, we don't want trails going through areas we're trying or sensitive areas like that. So yeah. in the future, though, we have trails planned and, and outlooks and things like that. So yeah. no, it's a wonderful accomplishment. My compliments to you and your team. Yep. Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, that's quite a story on Amsterdam Dunes. That doesn't happen very often for government. And congratulations on that award, Long. I know you shared that with other people. But well, uh, <laughs> well I was there. I didn't know how much I did. But uh, that was a public policy forum. And uh, they don't give those out just willy-nilly. and. Uh, 
they look at uh, good government, and that was a real compliment to Sheboygan County and all the people involved with that, so, yeah. including yeah. Roger, certainly, as a former chair and very much involved. Well, you talked a little bit about it. As you know, Sheboygan County likes to uh, think of himself, and I think we do a good job relative to taxes, and um, we're also under state-imposed caps. So and you talked a little bit about what your department does uh, to help the county hold the line on taxes. You want to talk a little more about that? Sure. Like I said, um, through the consolidation, we've been able to change our TO, our table of organization, to maybe fit needs better where we had them. Um, you know, that, that helped certainly uh, from a salary savings over the years. Um, also, um, it wasn't very popular, but, you know, we've implemented some fees um, at our boat landings and things mm -hmm. like that. And, and while that doesn't bring in a, a huge amount of money, it certainly helps um, y as far as the maintenance aspects of those facilities. So it helps we pay for the light bill entirely out of that, the electricity bill, the, the pumping of the, the, sept or the, uh, the privies out there. So things like that, road maintenance or parking lot maintenance. And a number um, of beautiful docks that you've put in. Yep, new piers and things like that, that we didn't have that funding yeah. in the past. And uh, you know, the county went through a rating and ranking process a number of years ago and, and Unfortunately, you know, a lot of the stuff in our office was at the bottom of the list um, from a priority standpoint, boat landings being one of those. So, um, so we implemented those, that fee-based program. That was one of the first things that, uh, things that fell on my desk when I took over as the director of the department. And, um, you know, that, that has certainly helped. And two, or three, I guess, um, like I mentioned too, we strive to apply for a lot of grants in the department to help um, offset some of our costs in that regard with wages and things like sure. that, so. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, in, in your department like that, the, um, some of those things relate to enhancing the quality of life, and they're wonderful things, but they aren't quite the immediate needs, say, as something that occurs in law enforcement yep, or something absolutely. Like when you're, when you're, when you're competing services. against yeah. health and human services in the sheriff's department or the right. highway department, right. yeah. Yeah, but that enhances the, the, those parks to the user, too, by putting in better boat landings and things like that. Oh, absolutely, like so yeah, quality of life, visitors, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're getting something so. back for some of their fees. Yep. So I guess you did kind of already talk about the recreational, controversial recreational fee. Yeah. Do you want to spend a little more time on that or not? Well, overall, it's, I, I think from my standpoint, it's been going well. You know, mm -hmm. you, the first couple of years after we implemented that, there was some consternation, but I think that's pretty much died down. Um, I think the, the user groups have seen that, hey, we're doing good things with the, the money that we've collected. Um, and again, overall, it just gives us a little more flexibility yeah. on, on getting things done uh, that need to get yeah. done from a maintenance standpoint. Yeah. I and did, it has to be one of the most modest boat landing fees in the state. How much is it again? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, a daily pass is 4 bucks, and mm -hmm. then a yearly pass is 16 bucks. I'm not going to name names, but there's a county down to the south of us. It's $80. Right. So, I mean, ours is pretty modest compared to other counties that have implemented fees in the state. Right. So. But we didn't have one. And, but I think the fact that when those people can see what's being done to enhance their experience, too, yep. that's why it's died down also, I believe. I think so, yeah. So good. Um, also talking about county rec facilities, what's planned out at the marsh now? I know there's a lot going on out there. Yeah, so the marsh, um, you know, obviously pretty, I mean, we have a number of county facilities, but the marsh is probably the most popular, um, being that it has the campground and the, and the tavern and state's tallest wooden observation tower. Um, this year, um, we're focused on the bypass tube of the dam. Um, so the bids are being advertised as we record this here today. Um, and then by the end of uh, July, July 31st, we'll have the, the returned bids in and, and uh, the bypass gate failed after 50 years in 2018 and, and needs to be fixed. So, um, so we have that going on this year and then we're also working on a new dam in the future. Uh, it'll be a couple years from now if, if we can get some funding lined up. Um, but we're looking at a new dam to hopefully pass more water that'll uh, help alleviate the cattail issue that we have out there. Um, and then um, I guess another thing, we have our disc golf course out there now. Um, I think two years ago we put that out there and our foot, foot, 
foot golf course out there. So with soccer taking off the way it has, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the a fast growing athletic or recreational activity is, is foot golf. And as far as I know, we're still the only one in the, the county to have a foot golf course. So, huh. yeah. yep. so it's nine hole, it's, it's, it's a pretty small course, but it's, it, it gets a lot of use. I got a call uh, the other day about it. Somebody's sure. coming from Illinois and visiting somebody in Appleton and wanted to stop at our foot golf course, so. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, just recently, you received the U.S. EPA Brownfield Assessment Award. Did you talk a little bit about that? Already? Yeah, so we just, uh, about a month ago, it was announced that we were awarded our third Brownfield Assessment Grant. And what a brownfield is, for the folks that are viewing that might not know what that is, that's typically an old industrial site um, that has some residual contamination, whether it be in the groundwater, or in the soil, or, or in the, the floor of the building for that matter, concrete staining, things like that, um, from the chemicals or the, the solvents or uh, um, lubricants that may have been used in, in the industrial process. Old filling stations might be another one. Um, you know, you have those underground tanks that nobody really wants to deal with. So um, the EPA has a brownfield assessment grant. So essentially, it'll do a, a historical review on the property and then allow you to uh, do the sampling to figure out, all right, what needs to get cleaned up? You know, what's there and what's the extent of the, uh, the cleanup that needs to take place. So um, we've been um, thankfully uh, awarded three of these now. The first two have gone quite well. Uh, a number of the sites that we reviewed with the dollars have now been redeveloped. Um, and uh, over $60 million in new redevelopment in our area has taken place um, on sites that we have uh, done the background sort of due diligence environmental work on. So, um, and then we have a number of them still in the hopper for this new round of funding as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think overall it's, it's been a, a great su success story for uh, Sheboygan County and, and the communities in Sheboygan County that have uh, been able to capitalize on, on those dollars. So, yeah. I mean, it's really a small investment has gone a long way into, and if you think about a development project, that's upfront cash then that doesn't have to be used by the developer. So it really Later helps, on. yeah, it really helps them get over that hump of the due diligence to be interested in a property like that, that may have some, you know, it's not a, green field, a farm field, you know, right. with no contamination or something like that. Yeah, because so. it becomes economically impossible for them to develop yep, otherwise. Yep, so a lot of the times those yeah. numbers won't work. Yeah. I know you also had, uh, recently, and you've done this over the years, household hazardous waste collection days. And I know I've brought stuff out different times. That's I think that's such an important program. Yeah, I think that's probably, at least in our department, probably the most popular Is it? What's thing that, that we that. offer. You know. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of times in government, you don't get a lot of thank yous, but I mean, consistently on, on that uh, project or program, we get thank yous that, hey, I wouldn't know what to do. I want to do the right thing. Sure. I don't want to throw it in the ditch or throw it down the drain. I just don't know what to do with it. Right. And some communities don't have anything like that. Um, no. Some have full-time things and we sort of offer a hybrid. You know, we have a number of events mm -hmm. throughout the year and we try to space them throughout the county. So right. south side, north side, and then um, in the southwest and northwest part of the county, uh, we host them at our hi highway facilities. So right. and that's where they're based in the four corners essentially. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, we collect, I mean, we get DDT every year and that was banned wow. in the late sixties, mid sixties. So, I mean, there's, there's a number of things that, that come in a full cur jar of liquid mercury. I mean, you name it, there's, wow. there's some weird stuff that comes in. So it's yeah. a good thing that we're doing. Cause again, we're either picking it up in the ditches or at the boat landings regardless. So yeah. we're doing the right thing. So yeah, it's better, a very, so. very popular program. So. I, I could ask you the question. I know you played high school basketball and tours for my brother. I could ask you how his coaching was, but we'll leave that alone, all right? All right. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a Hall of Fame coach, I will say that. Yeah, so what can go. I tell you? He was an excellent coach. Yeah. He was a great coach. Yeah. <laughs> now, at the beginning of this, Aaron Charity has been with the county now 13 years, and you know we, we all know how quickly time passes. But if you look at the track record that the county has established in those 13 years, in part thanks to Aaron's leadership, his good staff, obviously the support of the county board. We don't make good things happen without the board support. Yeah. But in the last 13 years, 
you know, you just mentioned non-motorized transportation program. You started cutting your teeth on that program. That's over a $25 million investment in our transportation system. Then cleaning up the Sheboygan River and Harbor. We didn't touch on that, but that was a $100 million investment in our community that we leveraged, predominantly funding from the EPA, the DNR, the responsible parties, but we had county dollars, city dollars, $100 million to clean up the Sheboygan River and Harbor. And then Aaron's been such an effective grant writer that these brownfield grants have come in. Now with the cleanup of the river, $60 million in economic developments occurred in just the last few years with these brownfield grants, you know, helping spur that development. It's remarkable. It's remarkable, it and, and just this morning, and I haven't even looked at it yet, so I presume it's, it's there. I was in a meeting this morning, and they shared that our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation sent out their weekly newsletter talking about how Sheboygan County is leading the state, uh, leading the charge with economic development, with that. all that's happening in our community. Yeah. And these things don't just happen. Good things have to occur. People need to get engaged, and really the, the, the mantra that certainly Tom leads and, and former chairs have led, and I, I think the culture of our organization, collaboration makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. You can't do it without the help of, like you said, the county board support or, or your support or, or if probably most importantly, the support of your staff, you know, to help you make help make you look good yeah. essentially at the help end of the implement day implement and get it done so it, it's yeah. it's remarkable you've had such a i mean 13 years have gone by and i've been here 21 years now and i can't believe how the time has gone but uh, i always say this to my coworkers you know i think we all can really look in the mirror and feel good about what we've been a part of the the role we've played to help Sheboygan County become even a better community and uh, we started off talking a little bit about Amsterdam dunes and i wanted you to spend a few minutes explaining to our viewers, well, what is a wetland mitigation bank? We talk about preserving this jewel of a property, and we, we've talked about how we've helped pay for it, recoup our local investment, but we have this wetland mitigation bank in the works. Why is that important? How, how will that benefit our community? Sure. So, I mean, you, you never want to fill wetlands, but sometimes, you know, it's inevitable, so whether it be for a road expansion project or even sometimes a road betterment project. Um, you have to buy, uh, if you're going to disturb wetlands, or let's say it's a new headquarters for a local company, um, if you're going to disturb wetlands, you have to mitigate that disturbance. And it's usually at the ratio, and this can change, but rule of thumb is for every, let's say, acre of disturbance, you have to mitigate an acre and a half somewhere else. And what that means is taking old farm field, essentially, that's been tiled over the years. It used to be a wetland pre-settlement and reverting that back to what it once was. Um, so in the case of Amsterdam Dunes, about half the property has been designated a wetland mitigation bank and we're currently working through that process right now. It's a long process, it's sometimes a frustrating process because again, they, you don't wanna fill wetlands. I mean, they're nature's sponge. They soak up you know, pollutants, they soak up runoff, they soak up um, you know, stormwater. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have some of the flooding problems we have currently if, if the wetlands were still there. Right. In Wisconsin, about 50% of them have been filled is what they figure. Um, so uh, they're an important ecological, you know, they serve a, a good function in that regard, an important function. So yeah, so half of the property at Amsterdam Dunes, uh, we're trying to establish a wetland mitigation bank. Um, so if I want to, if we want to, if the county wants to extend a county road or extend an, uh, an airport runway, and as you said, in some cases, you just, it's practical to do that. You're not going to yeah. build a new road or move your airport or Sargento as a headquarters if they want to expand and there's a wetland next to it. You don't want them <coughs> to move their headquarters. Yeah. They then have to mitigate the loss of that wetland. How does the, our wetland mitigation play in? Yeah, so uh, it, our county board, when we looked at purchasing the property, thought, well, let's take care of our own first whether it be our own municipalities or, or a county project, 
or like you mentioned, a, a local uh, employer looking to buy credits on the open market. Right now in southeast Wisconsin, there's not a lot of credits available, so the, the price for them is quite expensive as well. And from an environmental standpoint, you want to replace something that you affected in your backyard or as close to it as, as you can. Um, in the case of the county, at one time, uh, for doing a road betterment project, we were buying credits in Douglas County, which is, as the crow flies, probably 350, 400 miles away. So from uh, you know, an environmental standpoint, it wasn't doing it any good, you know. And it was costing us fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars an acre. An acre. So I think over a two or three year period we spent almost three hundred thousand dollars buying credits in a county that's four hundred thousand miles or four hundred miles away. So, you know, at that time we started scratching our heads saying, hey, there's gotta be a better way. Um, you know, we're subsidizing the taxpayers of Sheboygan are subsidizing, you know, hunting or fishing land up in Douglas County. That's that's great for them, but it's not good for us. So, um, so yeah, we started looking at another option or a better option, and and that was one of the impetuses for the purchase of of Amsterdam Dunes. So good for the environmentalists and good for the the business community and good yep. for the taxpayer. Yep, I think overall, you know, a lot of times you don't get those groups supporting the same thing and and right. this right this they did so. yeah 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 well, i know we're all pleased to have a part of it we only have a couple of minutes remaining uh, aaron and i have both participated on the friends of the marsh in the past i was one of the original members aaron continues to be on the friends of the marsh we built as you said the tallest wooden observation tower in the state through fundraising now the county owns it and has to maintain it and you're real busy right now raising funds and very close to being able to proceed with a new enhancement at the marsh. What, what do you have in mind? Yeah, so the Friends of the Marsh have been working on uh, their, their second project is a multi-purpose educational facility. And uh, the real, the main goal is to replace the old trailer that was donated about 20, 25 years ago for the outdoor education that nearly every school district in the county and some in the surrounding counties go to uh, for hands-on, you know, looking at critters under a microscope and, and learning about uh, wetlands and the natural environment. So um, that's currently housed in a trailer. While at the time it was donated, um, you know, it certainly uh, served its purpose, but now it's been outgrown. So they're looking at raising funds for a new building. As, as you mentioned, we're, we're very close to making that a reality. So. Part of the county board's five-year capital plan. Uh, the county will have some skin in the game, but yep. uh, we have some wonderful, generous individuals and companies that have contributed as well, and Aaron and uh, Lil Pipping, yep. or is it Lil Meerstein? It used to be Lil Pipping. Meerstein, right? Pipping. Lil Pipping and Keith Obler and others have been real engaged with that and appreciate your work on that. Well, yep. I hope you had a, a good 30 minutes to learn just a little bit more about our planning and conservation department. If you have any questions or want to talk to Aaron more about uh, program services or opportunities for improvement don't hesitate to contact us the county just updated our website real easy to get a hold of people or get more information and uh, thank you for joining us today next month we're going to have crystal fieber here who is our new corporation council she has been with us for a couple of years we had a smooth transition but she took over for carl bising who retired so looking forward to crystal being here but until then, thank you for joining us. And Aaron, thank you for a very nice overview. Appreciate the work that you and your staff do. Yep, thanks. Thank you, Aaron. Yep. On behalf of Chairman Tom Wagner and myself, again, thanks for joining us. Have a safe summer. We'll see you next month.